You know, so many times people say, I've been so blessed by your music or your worship has just been such an inspiration to me. And if we can really tell that you've been with the Lord and you just you do nothing but lead us right to the presence of God and and just different compliments and things of that nature. And I'm so grateful, but so humbled at the same time that today I want to give you an opportunity to get a peek behind the worshiper and get a, a little sneak peek behind the music. I'm LaRue Howard, and this is my testimony. So I'll start at the beginning. I grew up in a rural town of uh, South Carolina, Ridgeland. I was the daughter of a military man, an army, 22 years and my mom, both from South Carolina, was born in Missouri. And my family uh, had just relocated to South Carolina right after I was born. And um, my parents were wonderful parents, but they were not wonderful to each other. I, was, uh, I grew up in a, dom in a home of domestic violence. I had visuals of my parents fighting, my mom and dad uh, just going at it. Um, I remember so clearly, like it was yesterday, my dad fighting and punching and sitting on and hitting my mom. Now, to meet him today, you would never realize that. It was just the grace of God that he didn't kill her. And um, when I was about seven years old, they divorced. And it was to both of their benefit, because I know that if they'd stayed together, that he probably would have killed my mom. And soon after the divorce, my mother and I uh, relocated to Columbia, South Carolina, where she had me heavily involved in music. I grew up in church, Baptist church, and was always singing in the choir, was always uh, taking piano lessons, always taking dance. And I think that was a place where my love for music came from. Uh, that was a place where I could could run to and be safe, where I found uh, my identity. I felt like I, I was able to be successful in that. So in middle school, I uh, found my passion for music. Even throughout high school, uh, joined the choir, learned how to really read music and just become engulfed in that. And I had an opportunity to participate in all state choir and was the only student in theory classes and I uh, just did really, really well in music. And on the flip side of that, I still was this little girl on the inside searching for significance, searching for an identity, trying to figure out what is this life all about? Am I really worthy to be loved? Because I'd never really seen genuine love. Growing up in that type of a home, in that type of situation, there was no real identity of, of, of what unconditional and true love was. And so throughout high school, still trying to find that, reaching out through different boys and experimenting with different drugs and alcohol, just trying to find some place to really find some, some type of significance to my life. I graduated high school, barely, <laughs> and uh, went to college there in Columbia, University of South Carolina. And I majored in music education. What else would I major in? <laughs> but I majored in music education. And um, again, just wilding out and just uh, doing, doing what I wanted to do and almost failed out of college my first year. And at the end of my freshman year at USC, my mom was so mad at me. <laughs> but, and I remember telling her, I'm not college material. I'm not even going to go back. Just forget about it. They had me on academic probation. And I, and I remember telling her that I wasn't college material. And she looked at me and she said, if you can find the definition for college material, I'll be the one to tell you if you're college material. <laughs> and on that note, 
we went to Atlanta where my middle sister was living and my aunt and my godparents and all, a lot of my family lived. And uh, my mom took me to Morris Brown College. My oldest sister graduated from there. And uh, she, she took me there and we got to meet the choir director at Morris Brown, Mr. Glenn Halsey. And I sang for him and he offered me a scholarship right there on the spot. And I still didn't even know what was going on, but I, I uh, started attending Morris Brown College and I didn't major in music. I figured I wasn't good enough for that. I, I failed at it at USC, so I tried something different. I majored in nursing. Why nursing? <laughs> I, I had the opportunity to volunteer at the hospital back in Columbia and uh, thought, you know, I really enjoyed taking care of people. I really enjoyed um, doing things and helping others, so maybe I can do nursing. But the whole time I was there as a nursing major, I constantly found myself in the music department. And it was just something about being surrounded by other people that loved what I loved. And while in the music department, having different experiences from concert choir to gospel choir, I learned something that I'd never experienced before. And that was a different side of God. That he had an, a love for me that I'd never experienced. That he loved me unconditionally. So it was during my time at Morris Brown that I accepted the Lord as my personal Savior. Now, granted, I did grow up in church, but I never had an encounter with him. So I accepted Jesus as my Savior, gave him the Lordship over my life. After I graduated, uh, I married my college sweetheart. And uh, during that time of just being saved and getting ready to get married, I wanted to know what God, what was his plan for my life. This great creator that loved me, that proved himself time and time again, that regardless as to what I've walked through or what I've been through in this short time of my life, that he had a purpose for me and I hadn't even tapped into it. I wanted to know what was that purpose. So I was at a, at a um, intercessory prayer meeting at the Body of Christ Christian Church, which is where I got saved. And the Lord gave me a vision of me singing on a stage in front of, there was, a, there was countless numbers of people that were in the audience. And it was that moment that I knew that he had a plan for me to sing for him. I didn't know what that meant. Uh, again, just walking blind, walking just according to what God is has, has providing for me. And um, so we got married, and we moved to Orlando, Florida, where he accepted a job at Disney to sing with the Voices of Liberty. And shortly after moving here, uh, we just had a baby. My little girl, Deanna, had her December of 1994. We moved here February 1995. And we got here, and uh, he decided he didn't want to be married anymore, that he wanted to pursue his career. And so here I was in this new city, didn't know anybody, just me and my little girl. At that time, I just started attending a church that was pretty new to the area. And the pastor was a former praise and worship leader of World Harvest Church in, in Columbus, Ohio, uh, Clint Brown. So I started attending that church in uh, 95. And walking through that divorce and that time of complete despair was just something that I'd never even imagined in my entire life. And I can tell you that if it weren't for me being a part of that church at that time, I would not be here telling this testimony to you today. Because it was at that time that I learned something else about God, that his presence was tangible, that his presence was accessible. And not only was it just accessible, but I could get to his presence through something that I loved, and that was my song. I learned how to worship. I learned how to praise, despite what my current situation was. I learned that God inhabits the praises of his people. He lives in my praise. And so 
I joined the choir there. I sang and sang and, and just dedicated my time to being there, committed myself to that, that, that team. And I found myself having an opportunity to, to be on the praise team on the front line. And I sang on the front line, and then I received an opportunity to travel and to go on tour with Clint Brown and Martha Munizzi, who was our praise and worship leader at the time. And I did that for probably six years, just being faithful, following the vision of the house. And in 2001, I was remarried and walking in just a great time of my life, was a school teacher, teaching elementary music, middle school music, and uh, 2001, Martha stepped out to travel full time, and I felt God shifting something in my career and in my life, and I knew that I was done teaching, and so I said, God, I don't know what I'm going to do next. I don't know if I'm going to work at the mall or work at the theme parks, but I'm done teaching. I knew that, that grace had lifted for that, and that very same summer, I was offered the position as a worship pastor at Faith World. And what an experience that was. Never in a million years imagined that I would be a praise and worship leader. Didn't really even know what that meant. But I was so excited for just that opportunity to step out into something that I knew that God was preparing for me. And during the, for the next almost 10 years of leading worship, I uh, found myself back in the position of a failing marriage, this time due to um, a, a pharmaceutical drug addiction. I'd lead praise and worship. I'd come home and just check to see if he was still breathing because it was just that bad. I would pray for the safety of myself and my daughter because I just didn't know if one day he'd snap and kill us. <laughs> left us stranded on the side of the road in Jacksonville, Florida. And it was during that time that I said, okay, God, I know you've got more, you've got more for me. And I know that you love me. And I know that this is not what your love is supposed to look like. So I set some boundaries and um, that marriage ended up in divorce. And not long after that, my mother passed away suddenly, very suddenly. Everything in my personal life seemed to be falling apart. God was upholding me, though. He, was, he kept me. I was rooted and grounded in what I learned as a worship leader, that as long as I could stay close to his presence and in his presence, that he would continue to, su to sustain me, that he would continue to provide for me and direct me. Shortly after second divorce and the passing of my mother. I had a release of, a, of another CD, my second CD, this time on a major gospel label, EMI Gospel, uh, won a Dove Award, um, remarried, the love of my life. Um, I was released from Faith World. It was a three-year process of God taking me from a place of comfort and stability to a place of complete uh, surrender, moving me into the unknown. I gave my resignation in August of 2010, and another nine months following, uh, I was completely released. May of May of 2010. So the resignation came August 2009. The release came May of 2010. And uh, the Lord led me into the wilderness, me and my family. We'd had another baby. And we were in a place of complete trust, moving from a place of God, we have, we, we've been receiving great income and, and medical insurance and just stability and comfort into a place of what do we do now? Not, not one time did we lack. Not one time did we miss any bills. But the Lord, month after month after month, continued to provide. 
And I'm so grateful today for him teaching me and allowing me the opportunity to learn how to access his presence and how to hear his voice. Because there was another, op another situation that came up in 2011. I was in the midst of traveling full time and uh, had just completed another project on my own. Was traveling with uh, Pastor Benny Hinn and just doing really well. And we were really comfortable in, in, in resting in this wilderness place with God. I was on my way home coming from a service at the River of Life Christian Center by my family and I. And everything was cool, but as we got closer and closer to our home, I noticed that the left side of my body began to tingle. And by the time we got home, I was completely unable to move. My speech was completely slurred, could not communicate. We went straight to the fire department. They treated me as a stroke patient. They in, admitted me into the hospital for the next 48 hours to run tests and test and more tests, and they found absolutely nothing, nothing. But for the next three months, I had to learn how to walk over again. I had to learn how to speak again. I had to learn how to be in a room where there was multiple conversations going on at one time. And during that time, the Lord really began to speak to me about the next phase of my life. You see, there was another vision that the Lord had given me that I had placed on a shelf that I didn't, didn't even think about. And that was my, my desire to see worship leaders from across the country come to a place where they could be refreshed and ministered to and developed and create relationships with one another. Worship Leaders Association uh, is an organization that does just that. And so during those three months of recovery, I pulled the, pulled the vision back off the shelf and we, we, we rebirthed WLA. And today we are in three different counties. We're in Orange County, Lake County, uh, Volusia County, and we're looking to go interstate and international. And in the midst of moving forward in WLA, I also had an opportunity to pick up my uh, assignment of leading praise and worship at the River of Life Christian Center. And my family is growing. My family is being blessed like never before. I'm seeing prayers being answered that I've prayed and prayed. And even now, the Lord has given me a new vision. And I'm just excited to see what it is that the Lord is going to do in these next 20 years <laughs> of me being saved. And I think one thing that I've learned out of all of this is that as long as you stay connected to the vine, you'll go through seasons of being pruned, you'll go through seasons of being cut on and things being taken away and your life feeling like it's completely falling apart. But if you will learn to stay connected to the vine, stay connected to God's heart, he will provide for you. He'll keep you. You will never lack. He will protect you. And he will, through your life, receive the glory. I'm LaRue Howard, and that was my testimony.